The spring sports season wraps up on High School Sports Scene. Hi and welcome to this edition of High School Sports Scene. I'm Capri Gaines. State championships were up for grabs as the spring season wound down. The Hereford Bulls took the field at UMBC Stadium in search of their sixth consecutive state championship, facing Howard County's Glen Elg High in a rematch of last year's final. Hereford wasted little time getting settled as senior midfielder Jack Adams notched the Bulls' first score less than 90 seconds into the game. 90 seconds after that, Adam Sarabelli worked his way around the Gladiator D for the Bulls' second goal. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Hereford defense and goalie Connor Cunningham thwarted the Glen Elg attack. With 4.32 left in the first quarter, Adams tallied his second goal, giving the Bulls a 3-0 lead. That score went to 4-0 30 seconds later as Jason Ashwood worked his way from behind the goal. With time running out on the first quarter, Adams gives a behind-the-head flip to Ashwood and he slips it into the goal, making it 5-0 Bulls. Glen Elk finally lit the board as Tommy Chasen snuck in from the side for the goal. But Hereford kept motoring, with Joe Sider finding the top corner from a sharp angle, making it 6-1 Bulls. With four to go in the half, John Bauer picks off an errant pass and feeds Jason Ashwood for his third goal. Just before the half, Tyler Wasson finds the range for Glen Elk but Hereford goes into the half up 7-2. The Bulls kept their foot on the gas in the third. Jason Ashwood with goal number four just four minutes into the quarter. 30 seconds later, Jack Adams tallied his third. Bulls up 9-2. Adams added two more goals in the fourth from basically the same spot on the field to finish with five, along with one assist. Adam Sarabelli to Ryan Jones wrapped up the scoring as Hereford cruised to their sixth straight state lacrosse title and ninth overall, both state records. Each year, two senior student athletes receive a special honor. On May 30th at Greenwood, BCPS Superintendent Dr. Dallas Dance joined former BCPS Coordinator of Athletics Mildred Murray to present the 26th Annual Mildred Murray All-Academic Scholar-Athlete Award and Scholarship to two deserving senior student athletes. This year's recipients were Shannon Martello from Hereford High School and Edgar Walker from Kenwood High School. One of the things I really, really do like, though, is the fact that the BCPS um, athletic department really does preach student-athlete. And the fact that you can be an athlete all day long, but until you tackle what really needs to happen in the classroom, which Shannon and Edgar have clearly done, um, you really have not reached a point where you can really exemplify what needs to happen off the field. Shannon, a three-sport varsity athlete, ranked first in her class of 368 students and maintained a 4.0 unweighted GPA throughout her high school career. She participated in field hockey, indoor track, and outdoor track. She will attend Johns Hopkins in the fall. I mean, not everyone gets to play sports, but I really take the student part seriously, and it's more important, or it's important to put academics first and not just focus on competition, but you can also have fun with athletics. Well, um, I'm in a unique situation in that I was able to teach Shannon in class as well and also coach her on the field hockey team. And so I got to witness uh, firsthand Shannon as an overachieving student and a really dedicated and committed 
team player on the field hockey fields. Edgar, also a three-sport varsity athlete, maintained a 3.96 unweighted GPA during his high school career and ranked third in his class of 427. He participated in soccer, indoor track, and baseball. He will attend North Carolina in the fall. Academics have been my number one priority, and um, I really approach academics the same way I do, you know, games and competitions and just trying to leave it all, you know, the expression, the cliche, leave it all on the field. I try to leave it all in the classroom and make sure I'm putting on maximum effort and working up to my potentials. Came in as a freshman and, you know, has really demonstrated uh, quality work in the classroom and you know, that's what we're looking for, for somebody to apply for this opportunity. The scholarships, worth $2,000 each, are awarded annually to a male and a female senior student athlete. Congratulations to Shannon and Edgar. Now it's time to meet this month's Outstanding Student Athletes. First, Daniel Oyafusi introduces our Outstanding Male Student Athlete. Chris Smith is a senior at Parkville High School. He's been playing lacrosse since eighth grade. Growing up playing rec, a lot of my friends played lacrosse in the off season, so it's always caught my eye and got me a little bit of attention, but I really never had the time to do any of it. And then in um, eighth grade, my dad actually, he asked me if I wanted to try it, and I was like, yeah, sure, I wanted to try it. So then I uh, tried it and really liked it. Being new to the sport, Chris had a plan to catch up to his peers. Uh, really just talking to the older people and the people who have been playing, you know, just feeding off of what they do and learning a lot from them. Chris got the eye of those around him, even as a freshman. Well, Chris was a big kid, even as a freshman. He had, he had really good size, so I was very impressed with that. Uh, a good stick for a lac lacrosse player as a freshman coming in. So that was my impression. I wanted to get him on the field. First, I mean, I didn't really know him that well, and he didn't really, like, start the position he wanted to. But now he's like one of the main person, like main attack. I would say he's actually the best attack that we have. Chris is also known as a great all-around athlete as well. He's a good athlete. I mean, he's hardworking. He's always at practice. Shows effort. Scores a lot. Chris is a good athlete. Um, like I said, when on the cross field, he's. When he's on the field, he's a big, strong kid, and he commands the other team's respect. Uh, he starts to go to goal, he's an attackman. He starts to go, go to goal, they've got to respect him, and they, sometimes they have to slide to him early uh, because he's going to go. And uh, like I say he's got a good stick, he can put the, put the ball in the net. He probably has the most skill in a team. He's really quick with a stick, doesn't get pushed off easily, doesn't intimidate, he's not easily intimidated. Those around him have also seen the improvement that he has shown over the past few years. Well, he's improved as a leader on the field. Uh, he's grown up quite a bit since the freshman, sophomore year. Uh, his stick skills have gotten much better. Uh, he's better shaped, stronger kid, too. He's worked hard in the weight room over the past few years because he's also a football player, and he's uh, you know, worked hard at that also, but it pays off on the cross field also. Along with his athletic ability, Chris contributes to the team with his leadership skills. He brings everyone up, like, after loss, like, he, like, when you know, like, after a game, when you, like, destroyed, you don't feel like doing anything anymore, and he just, like, cheers you up a little bit. I mean, he scores mostly, yeah. First of all, he helps organize practice at the beginning, gets the guys going. Uh, he's the guy I think most of the guys look to. Uh, to anything, if things start going wrong uh, in a the game, they, you know, he's there, he can kind of organize get the guys motivated, you rally around Chris a little bit. Playing a sport has helped Chris in other ways. I think it's gave me independence and, um, you know, helped me uh, work with more responsibility and gave me more of a leadership role. With Chris's determination and passion, it's obvious what makes him a model student athlete. We wish him the best of luck in the future. For High School Sports Scene, I'm Daniel Yafusi. Next, KDP brings us the story on our outstanding female student athlete. Sylvia McBlue is a senior at Parkville High School. Although a positive, self-assured track athlete today, Sylvia didn't start out like that. When I first was involved, I was very nervous and hesitant, but eventually I warmed up to it. My first impression of Sylvia was that she was a very kind person, but you can tell she's one of those quiet, kind people. I knew that she'd be 
very successful in whatever she tried to do because she's a hard worker from what I can tell. As time passed, Sylvia became more and more confident, slowly coming out of her shell. I think it was more gradual. Like as I ran more and went to more track meets, then I just got used to it and I was thinking, yeah, it's not as bad as it seems, it's okay. Sylvia's grown more spirited and less introverted, but she's not loud or obnoxious. She's still quiet, but she's a lot more friendly and a lot more approachable, and she's more willing to approach other people than she has been in the past. She's improved a lot, greatly. She's, her confidence level has excelled, and she really has, the last two years, started to believe in herself. Sylvia transformed into a tremendous athlete and became an important member of the track team for both her coaches and her teammates. I'm the one that tries to encourage people, like if they say that this event might be too hard or I don't feel like doing this, I'll say, you can do it, it's not that bad, and that'll help them get through it. She's always encouraging people. Um, she's always cheering for her teammates. Um, she's always willing to help whatever's needed or whatever they need. She you know, is just a great athlete, a person to have on the team. Sylvia is not only an exceptional student athlete, she's a leader and an involved member of her school and community. I am a member of the Student Leadership Cabinet at my school. I'm also a member of class council and I'm a leader of the youth group at my church. Sylvia is definitely a leader on the team. She encourages people and she always most definitely leads by example. And she's always the first one to volunteer herself if something needs to get done. And I'm pretty sure she's a very easy person to look up to. She's focused, uh, very focused. She's very friendly. She's very supportive and very nurturing to not only her athletes, but students around the school. Anyone can see that Sylvia Amigbalu is an incredible young woman with much in her life to look forward to. Yeah, she's just a great all around person that we're very proud of her, not only on the team, but academically in the school. She's just a fantastic kid to work with. So although Sylvia started off shy and unsure of herself, she grew to be a competent and exceptional student athlete. We wish her the best of luck in all our pursuits. And from High School Sports Scene, I'm Katie Pugh. Congratulations to Chris and Sylvia. To honor their accomplishments, each will receive an award provided by Allagram Incorporated. Randy Days is next with Coach's Corner. For High School Sports Scene, I'm Capri Gaines. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Randy Dace and welcome to Coach's Corner. My guests today are Marilyn Bevins, the track coach at Perry Hall High School, and one of her top distance runners, Vince Ciotti. Welcome to high school sports scene. And first of all, I want to congratulate Vince on you just ran in the counties yes, sir. in the outdoor track and you had one fantastic day. Yeah. You want to share with us? You came away with, I guess we call them three gold medals. Can yep. you share those? Uh, uh, distance that you ran? Well, I ran the 1600, 3200, and 800. I was able to pull off victories in all three. Um, it was a span of about three and a half to four hours, so um, it was pretty tough, especially recovering for that last event, the 800. Um, and I think it's just last year I won the 16 and 32, but I didn't really run the 800 because I didn't think I'd have that level of strength to recover. So this year, you know, I've just improved every year under Coach Bevins, and this year I was able to pull off all three, which was really cool. Can you tell our viewers what those meters are equal to in terms of miles? Uh, well, 1,600 is the mile, 3,200 is the two mile, and 800 is the half mile. All, ra so. all ran within a span of uh, two, three, four hours, which I think is yeah. amazing. Thank Coach, you. coming in, did you believe he could uh, pull off such a task? For this year? Yes. Yes. And why? Vince has developed over the years. He's gotten stronger and stronger and matured. He's able to take on more work and his ability to withstand pain. Is just, I've never seen his level of high threshold of pain. And because of all those things, I felt he could do it. Now, when we talk about pain, what type of pain is it, Vince? Um, well, mental, physical? 
I, I think it's a little of both. I think, you know, especially like coming back between events, like, you know, one event you have that initial adrenaline of the meat going, but when you have that like lactic acid building up mm -hmm. in your legs, like in the next event, like that's obviously the physical pain, but also like mentally, like when you think about other guys that might not be doing three races or they might be fresher for something, um, you, you really have to concentrate on saying, you know, trust your training, I can do this and kind of get over that maybe mental drag of, I've already run two events, you know, I, can I do this third event? Or even with just one fast paced mile, when you get to that third lap, it's like, you know, we've already run, we've, we've already run two laps really fast and we still got two more to go. Like, how am I going to keep going? Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, you know, learning with race experience, how to just ignore stuff like that and really concentrate on the race. Now, Coach, tell us a little about your experience. Uh, I know you've been an educator for 31 years yeah. and then retired, but you get to now coach cross country and outdoor track at Perry Hall. Tell us a little about your background. Well, I was a teacher, middle school, junior high for 31 years, 18 in Baltimore City, 13 in Baltimore County. My background in running, I was a distance runner myself. I've mm -hmm. competed in many marathons, played second in women's Boston Marathon in 1977. So I've been around for a while. And I've always enjoyed running and I've always enjoyed developing young people and becoming a coach. So that's one of my greatest honors, maybe more than being a teacher, being a coach. What makes a runner like Vince so great? Is, is he born this way or is it development? What's the secret to his Both. success? You have to have talent to go to a higher level, but you also must have the willpower and ability to go out there and train and have the discipline. That really comes with unique to cross country runners in particular and Vince has done cross country to outdoor track for the last three years. He did cross country and outdoor just his first year. But he's just very strong and he listens well. He's very coachable and you need this too. You can't have a kid go out there and doing 100 miles when you only ask for a certain amount. You can overdo it. So he listens well and works very hard. Now I looked at Vince and I said, you're pretty tall. How come you're not playing basketball? And uh, let's go back to middle school. I mean, when it comes into running, People sort of only start usually in high school. Were you a basketball player in middle school? Yeah, I mean, basketball was my thing. Uh, I just, I was, I mean, I was always competitive, like at a real, like, drive, I guess. And I initially would apply that to like the ball sports, like, and basketball was the main one that I had some success at, and I was able to make the JV team as a freshman. But when I kind of realized that my my skill set of like having the legs to run and like not being as like upper body strong as some of the other basketball guys, um, I kind of realized that that would work well in a running setting. And I think um, just having some success on just talent like made me realize that if I added a lot of hard work to that, you know, I would work hard at basketball, but. I think my hard work paid off better in running because I kind of, I had the skill set there to become a good runner, but it took, you know, a lot of training to actually get to the highest level like that. So you've been running cross country, you've been running indoor track and outdoor track. Yes, sir. Coach, you ever worry about uh, burnout with uh, running three seasons or do you think each season they have a new uh, excitement or energy to the season? You're absolutely right. I do worry about burnout. I do worry about overtraining and getting injured. Even mentally, you can go cold, you can go stale. So I always believe take a week off between cross country and indoor. Take a week off between indoor and outdoor. And then the summer, I tell my kids, take about two weeks and don't think, of, just go to the mall. Just relax. And then we'll start our training because I send them all home with a homework schedule of the training for the summer. But that is very important. The young man is not only a athlete, he's a student and he's an individual and needs to have a life. You must incorporate them all in order to be the successful. When you make it one-sided, it's not going to come out to help you out in the long run. And you mentioned student. He's the perfect example of a student athlete. And I want to congratulate you. You were named as a National Merit Scholarship winner. And in Baltimore County, there are only five students throughout Baltimore County. You were one of them. And that's just an outstanding uh, uh, feat, I think, as, as, as an athlete. And Thank we you. want student athletes, don't we, Coach? Yes. Student yes. athletes are winners. Student athletes are winning, particularly in cross country and track. You get a lot of them. 
Yes. Now let, let's look at the three seasons. Are you partial to one season or do you take each one at a time and enjoy each season? Well, I mean, I think you definitely have to take each one at a time because, I mean, you know, people that don't really know like track and field may say, oh, you know, he's just a runner. Like how different can they be? But even the difference between indoor and outdoor track, the indoor track is 200 meters, outdoor track is 400. And although that may seem trivial, like with an indoor track that has a lot of turns like that because mm -hmm. it's shorter, for someone like me with long legs, like making all those turns, um, I have to be careful, you know, with running a lot of two miles or longer races because that really can strain you if you do a lot of that. So I think, I mean, there's definitely different philosophies too. Cross country is really like a team sport and like, although I've had some individual successes, like our team has improved every year. We placed third at, the boys team placed third at counties and regionals this year, which is our highest placement in a couple years, I think. And I mean, that was really cool to see not only me develop, but you know, Jose and Bart and Jai and all the seniors that like our class really developed. So cross country is definitely unique in that way. And then indoor track is kind of just getting back to the track feel of things so that when outdoor comes, you're really ready to run faster times and your endurance from cross country just kind of carries through. But indoor prepares you for the speed of outdoors. So I think they're, they're certainly unique. Um, now, Coach, I know you're very proud of Vince back in the fall with cross country. You want to tell us about his success uh, with cross, cross country this season? Well, we were very happy. He won, first of all, he did well in some of the, what are called invitationals. And those mm -hmm. are meets that just incorporate more schools than just Baltimore County, different teams from outside the different uh, counties in Maryland and even outside of Maryland. So he went up to one in uh, gunpowder, and they had about, he won the race and set a course record. Mm. Then he went up to New York and got, I believe, sixth place and yeah. ran really well. Came back down county championships. He won the race and set the county championship record for county championships. Then he won the region meet. Then he placed third at the state meet. Uh, it was just a great year. It really was a great year for him. And I also heard he was at Penn Relays too, Coach. Penn Relays, that is such a very unique track meet. It incorporates over 100 high schools plus, plus colleges and athletes from not only the United States, but a lot of Caribbean countries. I've seen one time they had a four by one mile team from Ireland. And it's a wonderful thing when the Obama County allows these athletes to go up and compete with high schools, because we'll just compete against the high mm -hmm. schools from different places. And Vince had a higher honor because to get in an individual event, you have to qualify. And believe you me, those standards are tough. Mm -hmm. And Vince qualified. So that was an honor to Baltimore County and to Perry Hall High School to have this young man qualify for such an event and then run well. So uh, hard work does breed success, huh, Coach? Intelligent hard work. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And so we have coming up now, May 18th, uh, is the regionals. And then from there, you have the States the following weekend. And uh, Coach, what's your prediction on events? We, he's going to go to the region meet, and hopefully he's going to win all those events again. But he has to be smart mm -hmm. because now it's not Baltimore County anymore. It's 4A North. A lot of the uh, teams from Montgomery County has good distance runners too. So we had to take all that consideration. He's not going to really try to go out there and blaze any real fast times. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very smart as far as how he runs just to win and get through. And then at States, he's probably number one runner, but again, there's always somebody else coming up. Mm -hmm. And we can't get um, settled. We can't be too fixed on what I think I can do. We have to run smart and know that there are other people wanting to run smart and beat them too. Vince, where will we see you next year? At Virginia Tech. And what are you um, gonna major in down there? Um, I'm currently in general engineering and probably will switch to mechanical once I get the general credits, so. Um, I have a 50% athletic scholarship there as well. And uh, I just really, I think it's gonna be a great fit for me because um, there's really a good balance there of the academics and athletics that I've tried to kind of achieve in high school. And they have, their engineering school is, you know, a really good one. I've had relatives who have been engineers there and had a lot of success. And the track team 
I mean, they're already at a high level. And my recruiting class, like my fellow recruits, even this outdoor season, have been running some phenomenal times. At, at Penn Relays, I placed fourth, and my future teammate placed third. Mm -hmm. So we had two guys in one of the deepest distance races in the country, and we're both going to Virginia Tech, which is, I mean, that's going to be really cool to experience next year, even with just the freshman class that I'll be a part of. So I'm really looking forward to that. Well, Vince, congratulations on a great career. We'll have Thank your you. fingers crossed for you come uh, regionals Thank and you. states. And Coach, congratulations on developing Vince and also developing that Perry Hall program that has a great tradition uh, yes. in track, cross country, and indoor track at Perry Hall. It's always very well known. So good luck to both of you. Thank you. For much. high school sports scene, I'm Randy Dace. Thanks for watching. See you next time.